Good morning and welcome to our act of remembrance on this Remembrance Sunday. It's an honour to see so many of you gathered here recommending, sorry, representing so many of our armed services and our uniformed groups in the civic life of our town. It's of course a particularly special year this year as we remember and give thanks for the Falklands veterans on this 40th anniversary of that conflict. We'll keep a moment of quiet and then I will lead us in some opening words. The psalmist declares, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Let us remember before God and commend into his sure keeping those who have died for their country in war and those whose death has been as a consequence of our inhumanity towards each other. Those we knew and those whose memory we treasure and all who have lived and died in the service of humankind. They shall not grow old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them 
nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We, we will, will remember, remember them. Tell them of us and say, for your tomorrow we gave our today. Let us pray. Ever living God, we remember those whom you have gathered from the storm of war into the peace of your presence. May that same peace calm our fears, bring justice to all peoples and establish harmony among the nations through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so we pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So we come now to our wreath laying. I invite the Deputy Lord Lieutenant to lay his wreath. And the wreath for Leighton Linslade Town Council. Mama. For Central Bedfordshire Town Council. MP for South West Bedfordshire. Mama. 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 The Royal British Legion. The Royal Air Force. Mama. And any other serving members of the armed forces who wish to lay a personal wreath. The Royal Signal Corps. Bedfordshire Police. Bedfordshire Fire and Rescue and Fire Cadet Station. <laughs> East of England Ambulance Service. Royal British Legion Club. Royal British Legion Riders. Royal Naval Association. Mm -hmm. 
Scots Guards Tumble Down Veterans and Families Association. TS Ocean Naval Cadet Corps. Leighton Buzzard Detachment, Army Cadets. One thousand and three Leighton Buzzard Squadron Air Cadets. Animals in War. Mama. Rotary Club of Leighton Linslade. Leighton Heath, Linley Bridge District Guides. Leighton Linslade District Scouts. <coughs> Church Riverside Scout Group. Salvation Army. K2 Preservation Trust. Royal National Lifeboat Institution. Buffalo's Grand Lodge, England. The Church of Jesus Christ of the Latter-day Saints. Churches together. Mm -hmm. 
St. John's Ambulance. Carnival Committee. Now there is time for any others who wish to lay a wreath on behalf of an individual or of an organisation to come forward. So that draws to a conclusion our wreath laying ceremony. In a moment I will give our closing blessing after which parade will be dismissed and any who, are, who would wish to are welcome to join us immediately afterwards for our service in church. But now as we draw to a close our act of commemoration here at the War Memorial, a blessing for us all. God grant to the living grace, to the departed rest, to the church, the king, the commonwealth and all people, unity, peace and concord, and to us and all God's servants, life everlasting. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you all this day and remain with you always. Amen.
Good morning and welcome to our service on this Remembrance Sunday. Before we begin, I have some welcomes to give. So we're delighted to have with us our Deputy Lord Lieutenant, Mr. Mark Hardy and Mrs. Mary Hardy. We're also delighted to have our Leighton Linslade Town Mayor, Councillor Fazana Karawala, and our Chairman of the Council, Councillor Gordon Perham and Carol Perham. We welcome the president of the British Leighton Buzzard British Legion, Mr. Mark Freeman, and town clerk, Mr. Mark Sococchio. We welcome the chief executive of Central Bedfordshire Council, Marcel Coiffe, and deputy town council, sorry, deputy town mayor, Councillor Shiona Hemmings. We welcome our deputy town clerk, Mrs. Sarah Sanderford, the chair of Leighton Lindsley Town Council, Councillor Steve Jones and Mrs. Julie Jones, our Bedfordshire Police Chief Superintendent, David Boyle, our East of England Ambulance Service, Mr. Jonathan Toy, and our local councillors. And of course, we have our MP with us, uh, Andrew Salou, as well. Welcome. Uh, and to all the local councillors, all the members of the Royal British Legion, the members of the Royal Air Force Association, Royal Naval Association, and representatives of the Army Cadet Force and all our veterans. Welcome too to our uniformed groups, our scouts and our guides, and to all of you, people of our town and all our guests, you are all most welcome here today. We remain standing for our words and opening prayer. We are here to worship Almighty God, whose purposes are good, whose power sustains the world he has made, who loves us though we have failed in his service, who gave Jesus Christ for the life of the world, and who by his Holy Spirit leads us in his way. And so we give thanks for his great works. We remember those who have lived and died in his service and the service of others. We pray for all who suffer through war and are in need. We ask for his help and blessing that we may do his will and that the whole world may acknowledge him as Lord and King. And so we come now to our first hymn, Eternal God Before Whose Face We Stand.
Please be seated for our first reading. This reading is taken from Micah chapter 4, verses 1 to 5. In the last days, the mountain of the Lord's temple will be established as chief among the mountains. It will be raised above the hills, and people will stream to it. Many nations will come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways so that we may walk in his paths. The law will go out from Zion, the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He will judge between many peoples and will settle disputes for strong nations far and wide. They will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation will not take up sword against nation, nor will they train for war any more. Every man will sit under his own vine and under his own fig tree, and no one will make them afraid, for the Lord Almighty has spoken. All the nations may walk in the name of their gods. We will walk in the name of the Lord, our God, forever and ever. So we stand now for our second hymn today, Rejoice, O Land, in God Thy Might. Please be seated for our second reading. The second reading is taken from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans, chapter 12, beginning at verse 9. Let love be genuine, hate what is evil, hold fast to what is good, love one another with mutual affection, outdo one another in showing honour, do not lack in zeal. Be ardent in spirit, serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints, extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you, bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice, weep with those who weep. Live in harmony one with another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, 
but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing so, this will keep you burning coals on their heads. Do not overcome, be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Thanks be to God. We come now to our anthem, which our choir will sing for us today. It's taken from Pericles' funeral oration and uh, is by Peter Aston. So they gave their bodies to the Commonwealth. So may I speak in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. It's always a great privilege to be able to speak on this occasion, on this day 
when we remember those who have died in the two world wars and in the many wars and conflicts since. And we remember and pray for those who continue to suffer the consequences of war, those who live with mental or physical scars and disabilities, and those who are bereaved. We remember that war continues to blight the lives of many around the world today. And remembering is what today is all about. It's a key part of how we engage with the brokenness in our world that leads us to war. It can be a very powerful experience because to truly remember something is more than just registering the facts in your mind. True remembering changes the way that we live. I remember some time ago, I think probably longer than I'd like to think, watching one of these programs that takes people back in time to live through various historical eras. Uh, it was about high street shops, and so people who were shopkeepers of the current day went in and lived through the various um, eras. And one episode took the participants to the time of World War I. The intent, of course, was to show how war affected not just those who went away to fight, but the lives of the shopkeepers, those who were left behind. And the effect on those people that had just signed up for a sort of general interest television program has stayed with me ever since, because I think it was a really profound experience for them. And it was surprisingly moving as a viewer to see people who were, at one level, only role-playing, going through the shock of receiving conscription letters, seeing the men go off to war, and of course some boys who were underage as well. And then there was this sudden change in the reality of the shops, going from enormous displays to empty shelves, and women working extra hard to keep everything going while the men and the boys were away. For those taking part, it took them beyond a superficial remembrance that most of us can fall into when we think about war. Dressed in the clothes of the era, confronted by the stark reality of what it must have been like, many of them were genuinely distressed and tearful. And so the act of remembering in this very powerful way was something I believed will have changed their lives forever. Their recognition of the sacrifices that people made in the past and the cost of war in the present will stay with them, I am sure. Remembering has this power to bring things into our lives in a way that really makes a difference. And as Christians, we're called not only to remember, but to hold together the brokenness of the world, God's response to our failings and our inhumanity one to another. And we're called to do that without despair, to keep moving forward in love and generosity and openness. We long for the time when the only tools we need are plowshares and pruning hooks, when the metal of instruments of war is turned to tools to bring about life and growth, not death and destruction. The vision shared by the prophet Micah is one where people trust in God and find in that trust their peace and prosperity. It is an image of a longed for future where people live in relationship with God and with the land. I can't help noting for those of you who enjoy Hamilton, this is the reference that George Washington is making, a longing for the end of conflict and a time when all people can live under their vine and their fig tree, living out their lives in peace and no longer afraid of the war. But our reading of Paul's letter to the Romans refuses to let us escape immediately into those dreams of the future without confronting our need to work out how to respond to the reality of sinfulness and destruction. It's full of very powerful words, but it's also very practical. How do we respond? We respond with genuine love and with affection for one another. Paul writes, rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, persevere in prayer, contribute to the needs of the saints, extend hospitality to strangers. 
In other words, our job is to keep faithful and hopeful and to look after not only our own people, in this context, the saints, um, and not those who are in heaven, but the saints of God, the people of God around us. But also we're called to look after strangers, to give hospitality to people who are not like us, those we don't know. And we're asked to repay, not repay evil for evil or to avenge ourselves, but we're told to leave that to God. Words that are easy to say, but it is hard to live peaceably when not just individuals but whole generations have to live with the consequence of violence and war. But if we behave well even when others commit atrocious acts, if we can trust that God knows and sees what is done and will hold to account those who hurt and destroy, maim and kill, then we are freed to respond in a way that will liberate both sides of war and conflict in, the day, sorry, in ways our daily lives that we hurt each other. Because it does work at all those levels. It's not just something that happens far away from us. Now, please don't misunderstand me. None of this is simple. And no one can tell someone who has suffered at the hands of another how they should respond to that hurt and offence. But as we gather here today to remember the sacrifices made by so many to bring peace and freedom, sacrifices that continue today, we need to let our remembrance change us, to let it shape us and the way that we live our lives. We remember those killed in war and those scarred by it with deep gratitude for the sacrifices that they and their families have made and continue to make. And so we respond by committing ourselves to work for justice and peace. And that leaves me with great hope and confidence that we will meet the challenge that St Paul gives us in the final words of our reading today. He says, Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. We need to hold in our hearts that vision of God's future where the tools of war are put away and tools for growth are used. The vision where we all sit in peace under our vines and our fig trees. But as we work with God to bring about that future, we need to let our love be genuine, to reach out to those in need and to refuse to let evil overcome us. Instead, overcoming evil with good in any and every way that we can. So this Remembrance Sunday, we commit ourselves again to honour the sacrifices made in the past and in our present by working for peace and for building the future of freedom that so many have given their lives and their health for us to enjoy. Amen. So we stand again now to sing our next hymn, O oh God, our help in ages...
let us sit or kneel for our act of penitence. Let us confess to God the sins and shortcomings of the world, its pride, its selfishness, its greed, its evil divisions and hatreds. Let us confess our share in what is wrong and our failure to seek and establish that peace which God wills for his children. So we pray together. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sin, <coughs> confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we stand together for our next hymn today, Be Thou My Vision. During this hymn, our collection will be taken.
I invite you to sit or kneel for our intercession. Let us pray for all who suffer as a result of conflict and ask that God may give us peace. For the servicemen and women who have died in the violence of war, each one remembered by and known to God. Lord, in your mercy. For those who love them in death as in life, offering the distress of our grief and the sadness of our loss. Lord, in your mercy. For all members of the armed forces who are in danger this day, remembering family, friends, and all who pray for their safe return. Lord, in your mercy. For civilian women, children, and men whose lives are disfigured by war or terror, calling to mind in penitence the anger and hatreds of humanity. Lord, in your mercy. For peacemakers and peacekeepers who seek to keep this world secure and free, Lord, in your mercy. For all who bear burden and privilege of leadership, political, military and religious, asking for gifts of wisdom and resolve in the search for reconciliation and peace, Lord, in your mercy. O God of truth and justice, we hold before you those whose memory we cherish and those whose names we will never know. Help us to lift our eyes above the torment of this broken world and grant us the grace to pray for those who wish us harm. As we honour the past, may we put our faith in your future, for you are the source of life and hope, now and forever. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. I invite you to stand. Let us pledge ourselves anew to the service of God and our fellow men and women, that we may help, encourage, and comfort others, and support those working for the relief of the needy, and the peace and welfare of the nations. We say together, Lord God, our Father, we pledge ourselves to serve you and all humankind in the cause of peace, for the relief of want and suffering, and for the praise of your name. Guide us by your Spirit. Give us wisdom. Give us courage. Give us hope. And keep us faithful now and always. Amen. We remain standing now as we sing our next hymn, Praise My Soul, the King of Heaven.
We remain standing as we join in our words of thanksgiving. We offer to Almighty God our thanksgivings for the many blessings with which he has enriched our lives. For the king and his family and all who under him bear the responsibility of government. Thanks be to God. For those who serve in the armed forces of the crown, on sea and land and in the air. Thanks be to God. For doctors, nurses, chaplains, and all who minister to those in need or distress. Thanks be to God. For the unity of our people within the Commonwealth. Thanks be to God. For the sacrifices made, especially in two world wars and in the conflicts of this present age, whereby our peace has been preserved. Thanks be to God. For the Royal British Legion. Thanks be to God. God grant to the living grace, to the departed rest, to the church, the king, the commonwealth, and all mankind, peace and concord, and to us and all his servants, life everlasting, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.